So Mick, this is your seventh consecutive year the Dublin ladies. Done yeah. nine all together. Nine, yeah. Do you get fed up at all? Yeah. You do? <laughs> <laughs> what part do you get fed up of? <laughs> Since 2002, I've been involved with a Dublin Intercounty squad of some, some description. It's a long stint. It is. How do you keep it fresh? How do you, like, I mean, you know when you're in, you as a manager are thinking, am I saying the same things over and over again? How do you keep it fresh? And, and it's amazing. I've asked myself that question so many times as regards, am I actually, do I, am I boring now? Am I getting boring? And probably what I've learned to do is give a lot more people a voice. Well, in, I definitely in the early days, even in coaching, in school, you were the only voice, but that's too repetitive. So you're in with us, the Dublin senior team. Um, how have you found the difference between the the men's game and the women's game? Yeah, there's probably a bit a, a big difference um, in in the skill levels, Philly. Like the attitude is the same. Like in mm. fairness, you know what they commit to, and their willingness to try and get better is exactly the same. Um, probably. And there's good and bad in this. When we started off, we were really fighting for standards. Uh, you know, while I look at the lads and obviously Jim at that time, you know, post Giller, the bar was really, really high. You spoke about the skills. What, yeah. what kind of differences? Like, obviously, biologically, um, I work with uh, females and males. So you'll see a lot of females with knee issues based off the, 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 the kind of the dimensions of the hips and the knees going in and you know, you see a lot of girls, unfortunately, with crucial uh, injuries. So the biological shape of the body is different. So how does that impact the skill level? You'd be impressed with this one. And having come through the college, you'll be interested in it. I remember going back to Niall Moyne in 2017, and I couldn't get over how poor the finishing was. And in 2016, I'll final, they did uh, whatever, 35 or 36 shot to score ratio against Cork. And, you know, no, no wonder why the game was lost. And I went to Niall asking, you know, physiologically, is there something different? And he put me in touch with a biomechanist in DCU who came over to watch them train. And he asked us for footage on what the kick should look like. And then for footage on what it did I look like. I hope you showed him a clip of me, did you? It took a, it took a bit of took a bit of search, <laughs> but we eventually found it. I think that was around 2015 for you, wasn't it? Um, I hope it wasn't Mick Fitz you showed him kicking the ball. <laughs> Michael Dara, Michael Dara. <laughs> but uh, but anyway, the bottom line is this: he he went away with his footage and he came to watch them. And he said this to me three weeks later. I could have told you this three weeks ago, but you would have felt I was dismissing. So three things: one, he said you can work on. Their glutes were weak, so therefore the swing wasn't as controlled. So that was a simple fix. You can go after that. But he said the second thing, which was the key one, was poor underage coaching. Right. And he said, now, that's your challenge. Can you fix it? So the soccer kick, that little instep kick that most fellas do for fun, wasn't the norm. It was like Sinead Ahern, Nicole Owens. There was probably two or three who did it because they had played soccer. Yeah or they had somebody who took them aside or whatever, but most of them kicked off their laces. So the bone in the middle of your foot, as opposed to the side of your foot. And that's been our biggest challenge. Every kid that comes into us kicks off their laces. The, the last two seasons, yeah. me and yeah, have, tough. Have, have won, won both the other ones. How has it been? Has it been easier to motivate yourselves coming back in after seeing me win it two in a row? Has that been easy to motivate the girls? Have you found it, found it easy to motivate yourself because of that? I, I was driving back from Clare the other day, and this, I, I, two little ones in the car, and I was thinking to myself, because their careers are really beginning, and I was thinking back over, and you, you, I've been lucky enough to work with guys like you, with Sigerson's and with Dublin, and one of the things that struck me was, no matter how many times you're successful, losing doesn't sit well. And the last two years have been really difficult because when you stop being successful, it's nearly like a hole in you. Like you know, it's nearly something that's not, you're not comfortable with. Like what, what what do you do now? So you have to. But part of it is, as we all know, is you have to show a bit of character in that. Okay, well these days come, and for lots of people they come more regularly than not. So you have, there has to be a way to answer that. So we've gone through 
a huge change with some we've something like 16 new players in this season but there's even though we're not top dogs at the moment we're you're back to trying to you know with new kids teach a group how to you know even the taste of winning or losing or what or that desire all over again and there is a nice challenge in that because yeah. sometimes when you're, you're at you know like I mean we were very lucky for those four or five years like that you know you're contesting most competitions at the latter stages and there's something a fantastic feeling as you well know yeah, yeah. but then when you go off it it's a completely different skill set yeah. and part of it is patience or the acceptance that you're not the top team anymore and that's not easy like it doesn't just it doesn't come naturally that you go oh, that's okay it's not okay yeah because you you still want to chase it's so interesting like we were kind of at the same level we use were in terms of winning things and yeah. we dropped off similar level as yeah, you did sure. like you know you gave me one bit of advice and for most people it was tiny but it made a huge difference in my game can you remember what it was um so got to do me kicking but I, I i before you tell me that I'd actually I'd do a lot of coaching courses and I quote you on something, right? right? So it's not pulling the dragon. No, now, <laughs> <laughs> the four skills, the four skills of Gaelic football: catching, kicking, pulling the dragon. <laughs> I was told that before a conference. No, John, John Morrison would have, uh, who would have been a really good mentor for me, would have always talked about you know uh, the shield. So the Roman soldier, you know, there's your shield, there's your sword, and your stance, right? And I always remember, so he, if a player's coming at you, and you like Michael Jordan in basketball, you showed him the way. Mm. But if he went that way, rather than taking two steps, you turn. And I always remember you pulled me, saying, yeah. that's all fine out 70 metres from goal. Yeah. Turn your back on the fella in the small parallelogram, the large <laughs> parallelogram. You're turning around, the ball's in the back of the net. And I remember thinking, OK, I'm going to revisit that one. That's actually, that's actually a fair point. He's probably being cheeky, but, Jesus. No, but that... But there's co that's coaching. Like yeah. that was from the arena. You made a really yeah. valid point. There is a time to only take one step, but there's a time where it's a fire yeah. and you need to put the fire out. Yeah. But that's so I would have made during my coaching career, I've a notebook, and I, I actually intend to put this to print to yeah. help other coaches. So I, I have that in it. Yeah. And I, I have things. I mean, yeah. you only picked up one thing from yeah. me. I think I picked up <laughs> half a dozen from me. Well, the one, like again, like it was, it was so crucial for me. Right. Long story short, at some point in my career, I was told as a cornerback, don't go beyond this point. Yeah. I remember a specific manager taking yeah. me off because I did, and uh, so I always had this complex about going forward, and um, but I always because I was a corner forward when I was playing with Dublin Miners, and I got that in me. You know, I was playing corner forward for Ballymun at senior level, and I, but then I obviously wasn't a good corner forward because I got pushed back into defence. But a small thing that made a massive difference in my game was you always told me when you kick the ball, go after. Yeah, yeah. Just go, go make move. that pass and move. Ball the ball, and yeah. that was with DCU, and it, yeah. like it, it made a difference because when I did that, it got me into positions where I was able to get scores. And then once I started getting scores, the trust in the likes of my teammates, but also. Um, offensive coaches, which would probably would have went, get back there, Philly, like you're a defender, do your job back there. Then they had to start saying, well, he's making the difference going forward, let's let him do it. Well, in fairness to Jim, and again, I would say this in coaching, and the seasons, you'd have a much better idea of the seasons than me, but I, I remember one of the seasons, you had something like eight shots and go, mm. and you scored twice. Yeah. And most coaches would go, exactly what you're saying, go back there, you're a cornerback. He mm. said to you, you're only entitled to take those shots when you become a 70% finisher, yeah, yeah. which was the scoring chant. Yeah. And I thought to him, that's brilliant. That is, that's coaching. Yeah. Because yeah. most fellas don't have that vision. And in fairness, yeah. what season was it that you outscored 15. the gooch? And I know yeah, yeah. that's not the, you know, like the narrative and that is brilliant. But the point being on it, a lot of other fellas would close the door on it. Do you watch, actually, I'm, I'm on the dark side of the world now. I'm in the media world. I'm doing a bit yeah. of punditry. Do you ever watch, so I won't mention certain, you know, shows, but do you ever go, geez, that pundit is absolutely talking crap. Oh, oh yeah. do you know what he's talking actually? I, I, I've already <laughs> said this to my mates that, I mean, I, I'd listen, the Sunday game is the one that, and I, I listen to the plan A and plan B. And I actually, I, I, I get irritated. It's like plan A and plan B. <laughs> Every single team 
plays by a series of concepts. Mm. And you may be playing a concept or two at a certain stage of the game, and then you change to different concepts. But there is absolutely no such thing as plan A or plan B. And when I hear that been said, I go, those guys don't know how to coach. I don't know what coaching is. Because there isn't a plan A and a plan B. <laughs> Does a team go out and play plan A in the first half and plan B in the second? No. And even when they go helter-skelter for the first quarter and they slow the pace of it, that's not a plan A or a plan B. Yeah. They are concepts of play, as you well know. Oh, <laughs> 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 